Update on the show, Purgatory. We had our main channel, the Macro Solando TV, terminated by YouTube because we broke some guidelines. We featured the Devourment MTD album cover as well as some hentai hit all the strikes and then some okay so which i don't care it was devourment it was kind of worth it i should have kind of thought about it you know what i mean and been mindful of it so anyway we started a new channel which is kind of good because now it's just everything purgatory on this channel we have a lot of things lined up new segments you're gonna see some new faces come on the show there's things that we're working on that is just it's gonna be amazing we hope you guys enjoy it and uh we just wanted to give you this update you didn't go to hell you went to purgatory my friend I forgot all about purgatory purgatory a little detour on our way to paradise Welcome to another episode of Purgatory. I'm Roz. I'm Tori Bell. And I'm Stina. We hope you enjoy this episode. Please make sure to like the video and comment below. Plus, subscribe to our channel. Now, for the music videos. We have a Shiva with Armageddon. <laughs> Gutted with Whispers in the Night. Johnny the Boy with Crossing. Blinded by hate, desolación de la extensión. Or pig with pigsty. Demon with chain smoking grandma. <laughs> Sky 
stillbirth with rising from the ashes. Jaws of Dead Dog with Devil in Me. <laughs> Tether with On Sight. Death of Deity with False Ideals. Left to suffer with disappointment. So we're going to start off with the <laughs> masterpieces. Okay. I'll, I'll say one, then you say one. All right, fair okay. enough. Okay, got you. All right, so my first one is Digested Flesh, The Answer to Infection. I say it's a one-stop shop for slam brutality. So mine, I put for uh, the first one, Absent in Body, Plague God. like their debut it came out i believe last year um absolutely solidifies what heavy should sound like um very intense insanely well-rounded talents on this project a lot of like crazy star power it just all works out you know they pretty much like have like the best attributes featured on this so it just it's very well done production wise as well all right next one is gut rot and dysentery 2007 split
brutal, gory sickness. The album every brutal head needs in their collection. Especially Gut Rot's Teabagging the Dead track that led me to this album. For my second one, I put Dripping. Uh, disintegration of thought patterns during a synthetic mind traveling bliss. Mm. album alone is already very promising for the music featured. Um, I love the pure organic sound, not too rough cut, but it's not too uh, refined either in its production. Very sold with the experimentation of blending their unique styles of the breakdowns, vocal cadence, and their sampling from hip hop to Latin to even spoken word. It's it's very experimental and very, definitely one of New Jersey's finest bands to come out. So I love it. Next one for me is Torso F with Erotic Diarrhea Fantasy. <laughs> if Mortician and Gut Rod had a baby in a gory manger. Wow, that's a very accurate uh, description. Mm. Nice imagery. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I put it's the classic one. Um, it could be argued, I guess, but I put batteries under the sign of the black mark. a top bathroom album for me. It's kind of hard to decide between this one and uh, Blood, Fire, Death because they're both equally like one of my favorites or two of my favorites I should say. Um, yeah, it's just a very beautiful like lyrically done, very beautiful masterpiece. It's very crafted and compared to like their self-titled album. It's just very, the progression of this album is just very, it stands out a lot. Next one is Deeds of Flesh, Trading Pieces. This album is so dark, full of meat with crunch, mm. a brutal classic. Very much so, I agree with that one. And I put for my last one, it's another more recent release, I put White Ward's False Light. <laughs> love the experimentation with the jazz and like their mesh of styles instrumental wise the vocals i mean it's a hit or a miss with people that like those style of vocals but just rhythmically it just takes you in another world i i love it i love mm. the whole album and it's over an hour so it's like not usually people get thrown off within 30 40 minutes but yeah. you don't even realize it's past an hour duration you're like damn i wish it was longer yeah <laughs> yeah i have two more next one is a bordeaux patient in the crypts of gore most cryptic, raw, doomy, brutal, loose, chunky masterpiece. The last one is The Scourge from Mexico, The Chronic Corporea Infest.
which I love that. I had gotten Devourment, MTD, Disgorge, Cranial Impalement, and She Lay Gutted, and got the Disgorge from Mexico, uh, the Chronic Corporate Infest, and I got the Broken Hope, Swamped and Gore. I got that all together at wow. a show. This one I say, it's the Meat Lover's Pizza of Brutal Gore Grind albums. <laughs> Next, these are two albums that are masterpieces, but the recordings just didn't do it justice. So I'll start mine and then you give yours, okay? okay? So my first one is Disincarnate, Dreams of the Carrion Kind. It's an amazing album that sounded like it was recorded underwater. So it was brilliant. It's just when you hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like if you've seen uh, Pinocchio where he was underwater, <laughs> it sounded like if nice Disincarnate, Disincarnate was recorded in uh, Maestro, the Whale's by. <laughs> um, I love it. I mean, it's a dope album. It just sounds like it's underwater. That's all. These are just a couple of classics, but my first one I put was a Demolition Hammer, Tortured Existence. I believe was like their first EP that came out. Um, I, I really respect Scott Burns, of course. He's done so many classics, but it really could have used more tweaking on this one compared to their other uh, full-length album, Epidemic of Violence. This one just is like, what the f***? You know, it's very, it's a little too rough for me, but I like it to a certain extent. You know, it just mm. the production really could, it would have done it justice if it was just refined a little bit more. My last one is uh, Necro Salvation. It's a, it's a very raw, it's a demo, I believe, or EP. Um, the volume was way too loud. The vocals were drowned out by the cymbals. Sound, sound levels were off the charts. However, I did love the reverb. It, it's still a classic. It's still a really dope album to have in the archive, in the collection but it, the recording didn't do it justice. I guess for my last one, I put, it's another classic. I put Venom's uh, Welcome to Hell. Yes, it's a very primal debut album, but production is so f I'm just like, damn, I really wish they would have remastered it at some point. I usually don't like when bands remaster their yeah, albums, yeah, but I was about to say. they they kind of needed it. Uh, you know, I, I like Venom, no disrespect. It's just that need a little bit of a, you know, adjustment, I guess you could say. So that's it. Bali Blue Moon. Tasting notes are cedar, vanilla, black licorice. And um, yeah, holy shit. Ooh, this one is a good thing already. Okay. Let's see. First time using this, so bear with me. And also, let's do a quick shout out to Concept Cafe's Coffee for sending this beautiful bag of coffee for us to try today. Thank y'all very much. And let's do it. Let's see. Sorry if it's real loud, guys. Very aromatic. Let's see. I'll take this out. I'm just gonna pour it. 
I got my water in here. And we're gonna start brewing. Also check out these cool stickers too. Rinse log stickers are amazing. Beautiful detail on the covers. He's always doing great work with these guys. Shout out to Cannibal Corpse as well. All right, I'm gonna put these in a bag. Oh, this is room. It smells good. It does. It smells it. It's very aromatic. Ooh. Right? Yeah. So if I poured all this in there, we'll be up all night. <laughs> and then some. actually pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, it gives you a little pepper. Let's try with stuff. creamer. Okay. I think the creamer should be on the table right. already. That'll do it. Okay. Put some of the um, Calif Califia Farms oat creamer. So it's like a cinnamon roll flavor. Gotta use what you got. How is it now? Still hot as shit. <laughs> it's still real hot. It's actually not bad. It's really yummy. Yeah. Oh my god. That that creamer is not not the typical creamer that I use. No, we like more like actual creamer. Yeah. But which one is it? This is a non dairy or like a non dairy based ah, oat creamer. That's should, why. Yeah. It's okay. That's okay. Like I said, we had to work with what we got. So. Um, yeah, I think definitely with like a full body cream creamer, I think it'll be perfect. Yeah, okay. It's still perfect as it is. Honestly, I like it blacker with like whatever creamer's available, but this is the flavor and the smell. I like, I like the, the nuttiness of it. I like the... Um... Very beautiful color, like taste to it. I just love the fucking smell already. It's alone, it's beautiful smell. It tastes as thick. Does that make sense? Yeah, yep. So it's cedar, vanilla, and black licorice. The creamer almost didn't do anything. No, it just kind of added a little bit of lightness to the color. Yeah. But that's okay. No, this is great, great choice. So I would totally recommend this. Concept Cafe Coffee. You can follow them on Instagram, as far as I know, and they probably have a Facebook page. And once again, just check this brand out. This is the Beheading Brewing Cannibal Corpse inspired coffee from this company so check it out i know they're coming out with a few more flavors Alrighty, guys appreciate y'all
So we have an interview here with uh, Disfiguring the Goddess, aka Cameron Argon. Is that you say your last name? That's correct. Okay, cool. It's Argon. There we go. Fun fact for everybody. <laughs> it used to be Aragon. Aragon. But they removed an A. Interesting. Yeah, my great grandmother, Spanish lady. I guess she was kind of me. Oh, shit. Yeah. So now I'm Argon, <laughs> which is nice because there's only one of me and there's probably like a thousand. Aragon. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, shout out Purgatory. Best show, Underground Metal. Thank Happy you. Happy to be here. <laughs> shout out to the dozens of people here work on the production I, I can't believe how people actually work on this it's pretty awesome to be here how did disfiguring the goddess start well how far back do we want to go okay so 1990 i was born <laughs> <laughs> started playing guitar at 12 grew up loving music right musical family my parents play piano grew up listening to a lot of great music different types new age new wave rock and roll big on the david bowie Big on like the ELO, big on uh, Sting. I used to hate Sting growing up, but now I love it. Big on Enya, big uh, spiritual influence for me. Low key, huge influence on Disfiguring the Goddess. Started playing in some bands. First band was a punk rock band, shut up The Devices, and they were like, this guy's sick, he plays metal. Started playing with some guys. Actually, I was playing with the drummer, and then our high schools merged, and then we met a guy who did vocals and a guy who did guitar, and we all combined. And the first name for Disfiguring the Goddess was called Corpses Make Mountains. And then one day he was like, hey, let's, let's start a side project called Disfiguring the Goddess. And I was like, nah, let's just take that name. The name's awesome. And then everyone left, um, except for the drummer and I. And I got two other vocalists involved. I'm getting to like where the form is now. Everyone left as soon as I kind of got really rocking on like the computer. Logic Pro was crushing it. Easy Drummer was crushing it, and I made this great song, and my drummer was like, this song's awesome, and I'm, I can't play it, so he left. I also figured out how to do vocals at one point, too. It, it clicked to him. I had an epiphany walking home from school one day. It was walking home from lunch, and I was like, I think I know how to do this because I was always, like, getting other vocals to kind of, like, come in and do it. Yeah. And we had this one, like, our first recording producer, he one time, like, took me aside. He was like, where do you find these guys to do this kind of vocal? They're just like people doing like inhale stuff. Oh, yeah, know? yeah. It's like, just do it like this. And then uh, it clicked. And I, I think I recorded the first vocals. I was using Guitar Tab Pro to write songs because you could program the bass and you could program the guitar and the drums. And I was like, well, I was really into Old Man's Child. Do you know uh, Demi Borgir? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The current guitar player in that band, The Bald Dude, he has his original band was Old Man's Child. Interesting. He was like the main guy in that. He joined Demi Borgir and Old Man's Child kind of like was put to the side and then he did one album with them. He's done a few albums with them since. Well it's usually with him and the other guitar player and the session drummer. Okay. And they have one album I never remember the name of it even though it's one of my favorite albums of all time. <laughs> it's called like In Defiance of Existence or something. Like he did the vocals on it and it's Got some great like synthesizer production on it, and Nick Barker and of Demi, ex Demi Borgir played drums on it. I loved his drum style, so f sick. Oh, yeah. So that was like a really influential record, and I remember listening to that over and over again and being like, man, if I could just do the vocals, I could do the whole thing. But that was kind of the seed that once it all clicked, I was like, this is dope. Because when I got Logic, it was to record the bands I was in, but I was making beats, I was making drum and bass and trance like immediately and I just got hooked so I just did it all the time and I think modern dis well even the original kind of disfiguring sound that people know is like a result of just like that's all I did you know just was I never thought of it I never really wanted to do it I just like instead of playing Xbox that was like my <laughs> you know so what are your musical influences I mean I love Enya. My favorite Enya album is Caribbean Blue. I like the song In Venus. It's pretty f***ing epic. I like a lot of random people. Moby's been a huge influence for me. Like, I cut my hair just like him. That guy's so f***ing 
attractive. That's how I want to look. <laughs> down slow, yeah. dope. That's the best album. Yeah. yeah, hands down. I like a lot of like stuff like Air and Zero Seven. Frau Frau was like a huge influence on me. There's actually some chick out right now who sounds just like her. The music sounds like it. Carolyn Polacek. You guys know who I'm talking about? I oh, know I'm not familiar at all. So f good. Shout out Carolyn Polacek. Shout out uh, Really Confused Tanner Berry for turning me on to <laughs> Carolyn Polacek. When I first got into metal, it was like probably like Rage Against the Machine, you know, Blank 182, you know. <laughs> and then I got a guitar teacher. And I was kind of like getting into, I was into The Doors and Metallica and stuff. And uh, he was like, he, sh he like showed me how to drop D2 and he was like, you should check out Pantera. And I was like, okay. And like, that was what set it off. Because I remember like going to middle school with like punks and stuff and they like, they looked like they were hard. Oh, yeah. like, I'm like, damn, their music must be sick. And I checked out like the Misfits and all those bands, and I'm like, this doesn't sound that hard, oh, you know. Dude, I'm <laughs> you, man. you know, it's like this is uh, not what I thought you guys were jamming. This sounds lame, yeah. but it wasn't what I was expecting. You know, they're all wearing metal and Liberty Spikes and boots, and they have the attitude, and their music just sucked. <laughs> so I heard Pantera, and it was game over. This that was what I was looking for. So the first Cowboys from Hell, Vulgar Display and Far Beyond Driven were like my lifeblood for a little while. And I had an older cousin, um, shout out Dane Williams, rest in peace. And he turned me on to Lamb of God. And this is actually a funny story. The first time I heard Lamb of God, it sounded like pure noise. Like I remember it just sounded like, like literally, like I was like, what the f is this? And it, it's kind of like the analogies, analogy I use to talk to other people who might not have the taste for metal I'm like it's very very acquired like you you might get introduced to something now and in like six months be like you know I think I I'm not I don't remember but I think I like that you know <laughs> I rejected it at first but now I think I want to try that again Cradle of Filth he showed me Zayo mm, I love Zayo. so yeah, good I love so good yeah he loves them there was this his friend was a director um, his friend's brother was a director named Christopher Sims, and he did a bunch of great music videos for like 18 Visions and Zayo, and his website had these videos on it. Oh, wow. And I just go watch these videos and listen to this music. So like 18 Visions was, I love that band, but I never had their records until I had like an iPod. Mm -hmm. just got like <laughs> iPod, oh man. But I remember getting like six CDs. It was the first two Slipknot CDs, Cold Chambers, Dark Days, Zayo, Funeral of God, Hatebreed, The Rise of Brutality, and I think the first two Lamb of God CDs. And that was like, then I got into like Meshuga and Dying Fetus. The accessibility of what people can get into today, you know? Like I watched the show to get into a lot of stuff. Shout out Purgatory. <laughs> I'm always like, this is how I find a lot of like crazy stuff, you know? I kind of have like a footing, you know? Shout out Zach, he's always showing me weird ass <laughs> <laughs> you need to hear something that like kind of catches your your soul in a way yeah and i feel like so much metal or even like brutal death metal and stuff there's so much ear candy to it and i really only resonate with stuff that like i can feel like the soul of it when did you start seeing traction for disfiguring the goddess you know, MySpace was huge. It was so it was so great for getting your music out. It was. It had like the music play out. It was such a cool way to like figure new stuff out. I agree. Man, yeah. I miss it sometimes. Because you could add people and it was a two way thing. Now you just follow people and they could just ignore you. But then you could just like add them as a friend and they would have to add you back if they wanted. You yeah, know? So they that's would right. Typically, there's some kind of commitment more from their, them. So that was good for us or me. At the time, it was an us thing and then grew into a me thing so myspace was great also had the profile song so people if they liked it they could oh, represent right. it on the profile okay, okay that's I right i found a lot of good music through that um youtube was the the true kicker though i was doing these youtube death metal vocal videos and this was at a time when that was not the thing like now it's like everyone does that I'm so saturated out now seriously <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was one guy doing it and i i saw what he was doing and i was like i want to do that too and i challenged him and i won 
Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah, good for I you, won man. by. There was never like a contest, but sorry, I won. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ever since then, YouTube was like a huge component of kind of like pushing the big chocolate as a vocalist and disfiguring as well. Like dis disfiguring has been like a heavy metal project, not really like a vocal right thing. Um, I mean, the vocals are important, but it, I never really pursued it as like a vocalist it was more always a project i've done some vocal work for bands and stuff especially when i was younger shout out burning the masses shout out abominable protrudity shout out i don't know <laughs> this is what bands have you collaborated with? <laughs> <laughs> um early on i probably did a lot of collaborational stuff melodorous did a lot of stuff with them like songs and production and just like Sometimes I think if you just talk with someone a lot and you're just elevating each other in a certain way, I kind of see that as collaborating in a way. Yeah. I just see that as working together when you just click up with people who are doing stuff that you like and they like what you're doing and you're just talking about how to improve. Right. It's like you're influencing each other positively. So but that's not what people... People don't care about that. The behind the scenes, they just want to see like the outcome of yeah. it, I guess. They just want to work together and put your name on something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're gonna benefit from our conversation. I did a lot of remixes for bands when I was like a little, a little older but still young. You know, like 20, 19. Shout out uh, as they dying, asking Alexandria, bless the fall. Shout out Suicide Silence. Suicide Silence is probably my number one affiliated collaborator. Uh -huh. Through the remixes and through my project with the late Mitch Lucker, rest in peace, Mitch Lucker, a legend forever. That that project was dope. It's called Commissioner. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I'll tell a story. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did, I moved to Huntington Beach where I'm originally from, from Northern Nevada where I went to high school. And I kind of got the buzz kind of started up there. And when I moved back down, I did, um, this is probably a little too much predating, but it's a clear relevancy story. I did an interview for a uh, website called Metal Inquisition, uh, ran by Sergeant D, who is also better now known as Finn McKenty. Shout out Finn McKenty. Oh, interesting. Okay. And legendary A and R label rep for Century Media at the time, Steve Joe, Stephen Joseph. Shout out, shout out Steve Joe, total <laughs> legend. Signed like a bunch of awesome bands back in the day. Still does great work with um, prosthetic. Records. Prosthetic. Mm, yeah. Okay. He works for Prosthetic now. They've got a lot of great music on Prosthetic now. They, yeah, interestingly enough, yes. They send us a lot of uh, promo stuff, so yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's awesome. Shout out Prosthetic. <laughs> Shout out Steve Joe. You're the man. And um, Steve Joe hit me up because he was working with Suicide Silence at Century Media. But he was he was also interested in disfiguring, and he was also interested in what I was doing as like with all the music I did. He just like is so good at meeting people and kind of like having ideas on how to like stuff they could do that would be cool and he's worked with a bunch of like really prolific important people and ev everybody loves Steve Joe he's, he's the man <laughs> and so he was like hey can you like do a remix of metal stuff and I was like I don't know like probably and uh, so he was like you should remix Suicide Sounds but you should meet Mitch he lives near you I'll arrange for you guys to meet coffee and you know you guys can pass the vibe check and then if it works out we'll do the remix so I met with Mitch he literally lived like five minutes from me. In wow. Like the beach. It was awesome. And we met at a Starbucks. And I was a Suicide Silence fan in like maybe like 2006, you know, when they had like that first EP out. I can't remember what it was called. The ending is the beginning. And they were like really tearing it up in the Orange County, Southern California, um, Inland Empire scenes. Like I remember going down there and like we went to a record store to buy some records. And um, we there was like a magazine with the shows in it. <laughs> flyer for local shows Hell yeah! and Suicide Sounds was on there I was like hey I just had that band on MySpace and uh, so anyways they were awesome I loved their that EP a lot and, but then when the full length came out I was kind of moved on a little bit I still like was aware of it and liked it but it wasn't like that was like a huge record for a lot of people I, it's still the sickest record ever The Cleansing but I was like 
really into like I don't know devourment and stuff more so at the time so that was kind of like where I was going to get that like ultra brutal essence that I think a lot of people were going to the cleansing for and um, so I knew him I saw them live in Reno a couple times it was awesome and he was he's like he's really tall he's really lanky and he's super handsome so he has like this vibe that kind of like takes over the room and he's got the tattoos too and at the time that wasn't as like common as it is today that's yeah that's true so yeah. it, was, it was just like his his it's energy like yeah everywhere we went was exactly it's nuts exactly and he was so chill and and like cool so easy to get along with so i met him at a starbucks and he like you know i'm a big coffee drinker so i got a coffee he got a coffee and like four pastries he ate them all and then he <laughs> threw up oh no yeah he, he threw up in like the planner Oof. he's like i'm gonna throw up and i was like laughing <laughs> um yeah he was also a big big time stoner and was always like let's go get food Damn. You know? so he's probably like ripping when he showed up and that was why he was like ordering too much pastries i think he called me later and was like that was stupid I ordered too, too much food <laughs> so i did the remix actually like you know i went back to his house afterwards and met his family and stuff they loved me because like i was just like a normal kid like you know his wife was from huntington beach and it just like they've everything about us just like felt very familiar so i got i got along with them really well and then i went and did the remix killed it disengage remix and um a couple weeks later he called me out of the blue it was like hey this remix is really cool I was like, that's awesome. And then he was like, we should do original music. Like, the, like let's make the remix, but it, we'll make it original. And I was like... That's dope. Seriously. So I was like, let's fucking do it. And uh, he's truly underrated as a songwriter and a producer. You know, he, he never touched the computer, but, like, his direction and, like, his uh, his way of, like having that vision and being able to communicate it with the right people to make certain things happen is like I never hear people talking about that you know and uh, he uh, basically just like used me as like the greatest tool set ever I was young I was ripe I was talented yeah. and I'm, I'm also like think like that too I'm very like visionary as well so our, our ends of collaborating was just like perfect so I would make like some random ass shit, like maybe 30 seconds of a song and he'd be like okay cool like I hear this from it like it makes me want to do this like I, I these phrases are coming to me like what if after this it did something like this and I was like yeah 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 so I'd go home and you know click 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 and then I'd be like I have the next part done we just kind of tackle every song like that and he was also like getting me into dubstep because I, I I did this tour with Burning the Masses in Europe with Suffocation, Flesh God Apocalypse, Nerve Cell, Annotation of an Autopsy, Burning the Masses. Shout out those bands. <laughs> and their families. <laughs> 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 and uh, the English band, Annotation of an Autopsy, were like really into dubstep and like listening to the bus and everything, like Rusco and whatnot. And I was like, mm, I don't know. You know, I like drum and bass and house and stuff. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of weird to me. <laughs> And Mitch was like, you should, you should get into this music. Like, he was like, let's show me in his, he had like a Civic or something. And then a big sub in it. We're like, he's always like, <laughs> he's probably high too. He's like, see, you get it. You feel the, <laughs> the bass? And I was like, yeah, I, I, okay. And then we never like talked about like, this sounds like metal. Let's combine it with metal. But that was like, let's use this energy with the music. So we did that. That, I think that was the very first bit of like, I mean, I know there's bands that have combined electronic music and, and metal, but that was like a big move in terms, of, especially in the scene of like those elements mixing. It wasn't like polished in the right way, but I think that kind of gives it the, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Rest in peace, Mitch Locker. We never really got to continue the vision, but honestly, the vision very well lives on I think with what I'm doing now and he's just a massive inspiration to I think anyone he's inspiring to people who don't know him who just know his music and heard his messages or whatever but if you knew him it was like next level so shout out Mitch Locker shout out to the Locker family shout out Suicide Silence
what is your process in creating an album well i kind of feel like an album is like a chunk of time or a piece of time you know i don't i think you have like a certain amount of time to capitalize on something once you've started it so if like you start an album now and then you write six songs in nine months mm. it's like a different part of your life that's true it doesn't really like mix it doesn't feel as cohesive so my favorite projects have been like a two three week and done i usually get inspired by something from the last project to do in the next project i feel like all my work like leaves a clue of like what i'm going to do next usually or like always leaves me kind of wanting more you know like i'm have something else to do so there's i feel like chronologically there's a good little like paper trail i did have like some mishaps where like an album will come out like the last album that came out carnival actually wrote in 2015 so it's like an actually an older album to me oh wow damn mm -hmm. and if you listen to it chronologically it's it fits in that like in that era i guess oh okay okay wow yeah yeah it was cool the the production's a little newer like i i mixed it down and did the vocals recently and sent it off to mastering last year but people are like this is great i'm so glad you returned to this sound it's like yeah i didn't <laughs> <laughs> there's always some kind of like underlining limitation or theme i like to look at limit limiting limitations as like a major creativity tool you know like i'm only going to use these tools on this record and the next record i'm going to use this tool or what have you or like soothe for example was all one beat beats per minute and so every song was like very just ran together really easily so that was like kind of the limiting factor on that one if i don't use the limiting factor it just it goes off the rails basically it's funny because you wouldn't expect that too yeah like oh don't limit your creativity it's like <laughs> wrong limit it because you'll be more creative if you're in a box and you know you're going to be in this box it's like you just know what to do you know it's like when, when you think you're when you finish the work on the canvas and then you think you should add in a second canvas or draw somewhere else it's like it just doesn't make sense you yeah know? i like this figuring as like an independent act it's because it's just like no one's telling me what to do i can do as much as i want or as little as i want so if i want to move fast i can move fast i'm trying to move fast right now there's a couple parts that slow it up like dis distribution i love my distribution company but you got to do it right it takes like two months back in the day i just put it out of the computer and put it on itunes and i was like make a youtube video and it was good so i'm still kind of smoothing out the that process because you only talk about the music but the whole picture is the process yeah you know making the music mastering the music distributing the pro the the music to me that's when it's done when i listen to it on, on itunes or spotify i'm like okay now it's done yeah and i could i feel like i hear it for the first time when i hear it on spotify and i could like oh i missed the mark or like this is actually pretty cool. Like when I heard Carnival on Spotify, I was like, this is f***ing dope. Hell yeah, man. That's good. Yeah. I was like, I didn't expect this to be so cool. And I've listened to it like so much already. Yeah. You know, it's seven years old at that point. I think uh, the next, I think the 2020s are going to be really good for me kind of refining that process down and hopefully putting out a lot of great music that is both self-inspired and inspiring to others and you know kind of push the messages and stuff i've learned about doing this stuff and help other people kind of unlock what they thought they want to do you know give them that little whoa that sounds cool i think i could do that and then all of a sudden people are doing it and then the the art game has been in like kind of like a weird place because i used toshiro agawa as my artist forever and he's now retired from doing work with bands damn yeah that sucks i know he's awesome everyone should go check if you're not familiar with toshi rogawa you probably know a few albums he's done he's an absolute legend go look him up and his history and stuff but his fine art he does now is so awesome he also has a great clothing company called brutal death clothing japanese clothing line oh that's dope it's so sick i'm when i went to japan i met him and he's uh as cool as could be so shout out Toshiro Ogawa, you're the man. I used to always tell him um, that I always kind of thought of him as like a member of the band because I always wrote the music with his art in mind. Yeah. Um, 
you still are. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favorite album cover? Of Disfiguring? No. Or in, in general. general. Probably Chumba Wumba with that baby on front. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I like Sting's Brand New Day where he's like standing in that doorway. It's pretty f- cool. Dry Kill Logic had an album that was really cool. I always like Slayer God Hates Us All album cover. It's just like so bold and sick. Is that the one that came out like after 9-11 or something? It or? came out on 9-11. On oh, 9-11, that's right. I was like, there's something. Okay, I forgot. Oof, yeah, 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 yeah. That was definitely bold. Shout out 9-11 and that <laughs> tragedy. 9-11. <laughs> what is your current shirt rotation? You're looking at it. <laughs> As many of you know, I'm in the real estate business and appearance is important. I wear like a lot of Lululemon. They make great clothes for men. I like Dillard's. Shout out Dillard's. Shout out my sales reps there. So whenever you do DJ, what is the craziest thing you've seen at a show? Besides the normal debauchery that I'm always looking away from. Craziest thing I've ever done at a show. One time I went to Australia. There was like no break. Like I landed, 14 hour flight. I, I go to like sleep at a hotel and you're, you're Time's all f***ed up. And like, okay, we're going to the club. And Australians can really party. Like, they get it. Like, there's just clubs after clubs. They're all partying, you know. Like, drugs are also, like, really, really popular in Australia, too. So it's like the party scene is, like, yeah. lively. Like, people love it, you Damn. know. And it's fun. It's Australia is the coolest place ever. Shout out Australia. Shout out Way to Silence. Was playing at this club. I think I was playing for two hours. And I was so f- tired. And... The, pr- the promoter of the fe- the tour I was on was like trying to get me everything and he was my age too we were like 22 23 we didn't know what the f- we were doing I mean he did but I was like I'm exhausted like I'm dying uh, I didn't say that I just felt like that and I was drinking tequila and Red Bull to like get the energy you know <laughs> like you know how alcohol can give you a little bit of energy and I remember like in the middle of the set I was I was gonna pee my pants like literally like I'm like this cannot wait I'm running out of f- time so I'm in a booth I'm in a club it's not like I'm on stage or anything it's like a proper f- club I'm in like this little booth thing you know and there's people like all around it like you know oh, doing shit. this over the glass <laughs> and I'm like get the f- out of here and I had to pee in a bottle in the middle of my set it's, uh, it's a real yeah. I bet you so many DJs have done that I bet yeah because you play for so long and you're drinking and you're traveling i bet you'd have it all the time judge me <laughs> <laughs> so where can people connect with you on social media so you can go to my website it's www.cameronargon.com that's www.c-a-m-e-r-o-n-a-r-g-o-n.com it's my sick website and you have to put the www otherwise it says i don't pay for it but i do <laughs> I made it myself because I was sick of social media. Social media is whatever. My favorite one's Twitter, at Big Chocolate or at Disfiguring the G. Twitter's my favorite, but I, I don't go on it that much because it's distracting. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Thank you very much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. Shout out to all the crew and production. <laughs> you guys are all amazing. Legendary show. Shout out Purgatory. Sickest underground death metal show ever. I actually have a gift for the Purgatory crew. It's... um. Just figuring the goddess koozies. Oh, awesome. Very awesome. So, yeah. Thank you guys Appreciate you. Yeah. you. These are sick. <laughs> 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 oh, my pleasure. Thank you guys. All right, so this is my list of album covers. The first one is Suffocation Human Waste by Ron Spencer. Second one is Obituary Cause of Death by Michael Whelan. Next one is Sepultura Morbid Visions by Chikal and Alex. Next one is General Surgery Necrology by Gottfried Jonifers for Photography and Jacob Spies or Spies for Layout. And the last one is Dystopia with Human Equals Garbage by Robert Vanderin.
For mine, I put Dream Unending, Tide Turns Eternal by Matt Jaff. Then I got Desecrator's Subconscious Release by Dan Seagrave, which I feel like is an underrated, like, classic image he's done that doesn't get mentioned often. Then we have, it's kind of an oddball one, but uh, I put Gosudar uh, slash Malignant Altar Split by Nestor mm -hmm. Povarin. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a weird choice, but it, I love, like, the black and white. I usually don't go for black and white covers, but this one has a lot of intricate detail. Then we have Excrescence with Inescapable Anatomical Deterioration. And then we have Merciful Fates Melissa by Thomas Holm. All right, so last we're going to get into the two albums that grew on us okay. over time. I'll just give my two. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the first one was Dead In, Hymns of the Sick, 1998. Yeah, yeah. Next one is Libidity Fetish for the Sick, mm. 1997. At the time, I, I had an abundance of music to listen to, never allowed the albums to soak in and appreciate them. So these, over time, I was like, you know what? These were actually really sick albums, and I'm so glad that I had them in my collection. I gave all my collection away uh, in high school. Um, I kind of just do that, just like our channel. You know what I'm saying? Our channel just, <laughs> we lost our channel, oh. and then now we have a new channel. So <laughs> um, starting over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like high school. Yeah, I did Dark Angels, Time Does Not Heal. I really didn't appreciate the aesthetic of it at the time when it like I was younger and then I realized that getting older it's probably Gene Hoagland's like some of his best drum work I've ever heard compared to all the other projects he's been part of so I feel like an asshole for not appreciating it back then compared to you know nowadays um, and then the second one was Morbid Angel's formula is fatal to the flesh Uh, my younger years, I only stuck with like the first four <laughs> albums because, let's face it, they kind of slipped off for a little bit. So, you know, yeah, it's, I thought it was going to be more of like a downward spiral, but so I didn't really want to give it a chance. And then when I got older, I was like, wow, they try to like redeem themselves, you know, yeah, so yeah. slightly, but you know, it is what it is. Last, we're getting into the band releases. As the Soul with Siren to Blight. Man over with Taken EP.
A pretext to human suffering with endless cycle of suffering. Collapsed with sepsis. Astrophirus with pulsations from the black orb. Dantia with Deray. Crucify 2 with Demo 23.
caustic phlegm with putrefying flesh. Teratology, the lingering stench of anatomopathological scum. divinity with delimming the extirpated. Paraphilia with the memory of death given form. Rotten brain with wait for a putrefaction. <laughs> Oh, 
Vault with dissolved in radioactive sludge. Equestrium with pickled preservation. Cystic embalmment with folklore defon de egut. Dehumanizing encephalectomy with Demo 2023. Vasculitis with regurgitating fetal chunks.
tomb of butchery with kneeling at the obelisk of writhing flesh. Protrusion with slugs of decadence slash scorned vengeance. Paroxysm with fragmentation slash stratagem. Grave Syndrome with Promo 2023. Type A secretor with dildonic and bludgeon.
carnivorous monstrosity with Beyond the Abomination. Three fifty seven homicide was executed on site. Orphasia with parametrical methods to distort the space. Syndactyly with Tortures of the Inquisition. Trichomaniasis with makeshift crematoria.
bed of chaos with demonstration of chaos. Torso with postpartum ecstasy. boil with boils of plague. Esophagus with Machine City. Putrid stew with sawing till sundown.
We hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.